cemetery. See, I kind of took sort of good, not so bad notes. <laughs> Again, pretty straightforward. Um, some of the details a lot of people liked to play around with. Um, the sandbags were like the fresh dirt, um, the little offerings, or the little plaque things. I think these are the ends of, oh, I don't know, maybe pillars or something. I'm not sure. Like this one is the, I think it's the purple pod thingy and it's got, it actually comes in a wooden tray and if you just push it down enough, you just see the dirt. That makes a good little fresh burial, fresh kind of thing. Um, from here, I think we start seeing the uh, the different um, districts or areas specific to this living space. Um, this one, I believe, is um, Mordesh, I think. So you got a lot of um, uh, I don't know how to describe it, where they have like a lot of the medical things where they could like hook up and I don't know, replenish or get some kind of treatment or something. I don't know how else to describe that. So this looks kind of like a little Mordash bar of some sort. So they got like the little medical things and the tables and like the little seating and stuff and uh, up above and these pillars here that's part of that um, blue light lounge tables. Same thing here. It's the same item. A lot of people like use that for water features as well. All right. I'm going to take a look through these buildings first, though. Um, and then you've got like some little individual places where they have like a, a waiting room or a front room and then a bedroom kind of thing. Here you have the little beds. And maybe that's what that was in the other place for the Mordash kitties where they could go and, and re refresh or rest up or whatever. Notice they added a little bit of trim here just to kind of not make it so boring. Same way with the archways, how they've layered it up to make it look a little fancier. Um, same difference with like the, the window here with the layered glass, like an interesting pattern using different colors of the layered glass. And again, the more layers, the more frosty it becomes. It just adds a different pattern. It looks psychedelic looking almost. Uh, another little mini apartment or whatever you want to call it. One of the rare cases, we actually see the Exile fireplace in full view. And it doesn't stand out too poorly here. It matches all right, so that's, that's a plus. So like a double bed this time instead of the single. Um, the table here, I think, is an upside down fountain. Uh, faux door here. It's just a bookcase. Um, I think it's the Dominion version. Uh, the thing that they're using for the beds um, just to close it off so it's like they're locked up or whatever. Um, this here I think was a concept of this is where they come to get like some, what do they call it? Uh, the Vitalis sl slush machine. Um, the liquid or whatever that the Macari, and uh, not Macari, the Mordash have in their various body part kind of stuffs. Um, and it's a bar that they come and can get, like, I guess refills or supplements or something. But so they have a lot of these, like, um, the med bags. And this is a Technophage. I think it's the emitter. I'm not positive on that, but it's. Something along those lines. Um, so it's like a little lab works 
with different uh, plants and stuff where they're making this goop. And then here um, at the bar, you can order the different goops. <laughs> so it's like a little slushy vending machine kind of thing where you get your, your drink. Uh, trying to think. I think most of this is like um, uh, travel posters, um, layered glass, a lot of the technophage, the different versions of the, the bars or columns or whatever you want to call them. Um, the little spouts, I think those are the uh, magnifying glass deal. I think it's, there's another one here. Yeah, it's this thing here, but they've just set it so that you just see that little nubbin on the outside. Um, and then of course the two of cups. Uh, the cabinet itself is uh, Cassian floors and then it's benches, the Dominion benches for that part. Uh, domes, curved glass, and then the uh, infused habanero bloom for both here and there and other places, I think. Nice little wiry setup. Okay, I think, I think we go here next. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm supposed to stay in here. It's really hard. Again, I get lost in this place pretty easy, so I hope I'm going the right way. But this is the Loftite Tunnel. So you see a lot of the sparklies and different formations here. I think this is going close to pretty, as pretty close to above ground as you can get. Um, this is the camp area. I assume this is where they come and share stories. Um, maybe some elders come and share their wisdom. Or they just want to hang out. That kind of thing. And then if we go even further up, that takes us to um, where they keep the animals. Do some of their farming. And there's also a Granok village here. So here's like a pinned area where the rest are now. Originally these were plushies and then later uh, Siskui replaced it. Um, uh, yeah, <laughs> I told you I'd get turned around. <laughs> um, replaced them with the actual NPC critters. So uh, you have the little pin here. Little patch that is made out of picnic tables, um, different grasses laid out to kind of cover up everything that they don't want going. And then this leads up to the little Granok area. It reminds me of like the Flintstones. You know, they got these little cave houses so there's a bed, there's a fireplace for cooking, and then a little thing. And it's just a, a few of them put together here. Basically the same, the details slightly changed. And of course the community campfire again where they can come and chit chat. Their, uh, I don't know, stories about the olden days or something. I don't know. Plans for their farming or whatever. Um, so over here is where they have the gardens or the veggies and fruits. Um, if you're wondering about this part, I think that's the bottom side of the hovering medical cots. Um, but you could get away with um, using the uh, the long uh, or even the short, maybe uh, portable uh, holograph uh, pieces 
they give off that same similar glowy effect. Um, and this is supposed to be the uh, the gardener's loft here, the one that tends all the, the greenery. This is their little place to hang out. Got a nice little kind of water feature, place to sleep, little tub kind of thing, I guess, going on. If you hear some yarn, that's butter asking for some attention. Biscuit's been kind of under the weather, weather with some sniffles, and I think he's not been playing as much, and she's saying, play with me, and pay me attention, and he's just not up for it. Okay, so I think, I think that's it for up here. Gosh, I hope so. Okay, so go to where Opsy is. All right, let's see if I can find my way back. Uh... Oh, Butter, you sound so pitiful. Backtrack, backtracking, backtracking. Ah, okay. I was supposed to go across here, apparently. Shame on me. <laughs> this takes us to the bar. The bar. Okay, let's, um, I guess we'll go this way. Um, we're looking for the Orin bucket. Okay, so the warm bucket is like the end. So here's the bar. Um, you've got a lot of little um, view. You can see the, um, uh, I forget what fab kit this is. The one where you squish the berries and make the booze kind of thing. Um, here you have a, a little bench uh, made with um, tires and pillows with a little bit of um, two by fours added in. A lot of shelving, uh, just like a lot of little knickknacks thrown in there. Uh, up above. Gosh, I don't remember him showing me all this. Okay. Um, I think this leads to some of the bar area out here. Uh, and there's a lot of tubes and stuff. I'm bound to get confused as to where I'm going, but. There's like a lot of little platforms and stuff for them to hang out on. Here's a view of the Mordesh area from this spot. If you go down this way, you've got um, the bathrooms. You don't miss anything. And then here, I think, I don't know if I can go up this one. I guess so. Oops. Like inside something I shouldn't be. <laughs> I 
think I'm supposed to be able to get onto the bowl out there. I'm horrible at this jumping. I don't know. I don't think I can get out, out this way. I think there's another way to it that is outside the cup there. So we'll try and go that way. Again, it's all kind of interconnected, so it's real easy for me to get turned around. So apologies if I'm totally messing this up. Here's um, where we were looking down. This is where I was just a moment ago. Um, so you have uh, a little meeting place out here where people can chillax in front of this oversized fireplace kind of thing. You've got um, a little gaming table here with the seats. We've seen this kind of uh, little seating arrangement before. Um, if you don't want your pillows sticking out like it does here, um, the only way we figured out how to do it is to make multiples of these domes and just layer them up. Again, it's not practical for those that are like really hurting for a decor space since that was one of our hard limits. But if you can manage it, um, that's the best way to do it. It basically it's like thickening it up and that way um, certain things don't stick out like that. Uh, then we have a stage. Again just using those portable holograph things to make it look like you're hovering. Um, decking railing for this part. Exile floors for the layered a bit there. Got the bar, several different seating arrangements. You've got some at the bar itself, the little picnic tables, this table here. Um, the little grill is basically just one of the portable grills and then they added um, the curved walls and, and such. You could probably get away with just a single cylinder. Um, I just suit that up as if it was an uh, actual cabinet thing. I feel a few coming on. Sorry, and a yawn. <laughs> I didn't get a whole lot of sleep last night, so <laughs> my apologies on that. Um, again, the shelving and a lot of the walls is just basically um, obsidian stone, and then it's like they've decided, okay, this part's going to be this. So the little freezer section or whatever where they're keeping the kegs chilled is just uh, accented with um, uh, icicles and frozen water and uh, snow covered stones and stuff. I'm a little robot uh, chef here monitoring the grills. A lot of the stoves and, and this, everything is just kind of inset into the stone to make it look like it's a single part of the item there. There's like a little VIP area with some beds and such. And I think this is where I'm, I'm liable to fall, so just bear with me here. But that tube that I was trying to jump up earlier where I was inside the mug, I think this is where we would supposedly come out. Um, maybe it's where I would jump down the mug and then actually slide down the tube. I don't know if that, or maybe it's not meant to be uh, gotten to from both ways. And then here again, Pop down in the mug, slide down the tube, and then you get to this little cubby hole here, which is encased in glass, and that's why the camera doesn't want to zoom out, but it's like a little garden area. So now let's see if I can get out and not stuck in the mug. I have a feeling I'm going to. There we go. Okay, so visit all that part. That's good. Um, the railing on this ladders 
you know, we do have the the decking railing and stuff that you can use or other fence type features, but the ladder is uh, another fave. It looks kind of rustic with its uh, bent uh, rungs and everything. So that's that encapsulated area we were just in. From the bar, that leads us to um, what uh, Cisco called the something. <laughs> uh, Orin bucket, I guess. That's what I said. See how these like cardboard boxes is kind of like little um, cubby holes. We also have the bucket here. Oops. It's I guess where they hang out. It's just an oversized um, feeding trough filled with pillows and plushies and um, <clears throat> come and hang out, chit chat. And let's see if I can get up here. I think last time it took me like four times to try and get up. So Again, I am the worst at like platform games, so this is like my nightmare trying to jump up things. <laughs> we could be here all morning trying to get me to get up there. Sisqui does it and it's like one jump and they're they're good. <sighs> Takes me forever. So that leads us to this little area. Again, it's got little hangouts. I'm not going to jump to all of them, but um, you can see there's like little hammocks with pillows and stuff that you can get to if you want to cuddle up with someone and, and uh, rest the afternoon away. But that leads us to um, the Oren Shire or such. There's like a little, um, I think this is supposed to be like um, where the the matriarch would be. I think this is like a faux house. It looks like a hugel house with the door and that's really just the tree table. Um, and then this is where they would come and I don't know do ceremonies and stuff. Um, but over here you get to, uh, oh let's go this way first. Kind of like a little Oren campy ground sort of. Um, there's a water feature there's like a little seating area, just little cozy places where people can gather and talk. And the only downside to this particular setup is you can't actually go inside the tents. The way they made the item, it has collision solidly across. So no matter how big you make the item, you can never go inside it. You can put NPCs and stuff inside it, but you can't yourself have your character go in and like it down and stuff. It just blocks you, which is unfortunate. It was one of those items I think people were hoping that it, you could use it as like a little house kind of thing, but no, nope. no go. Um, and I'm not even going to go down here. There's actually a little path uh, hidden back here, but I got messed up last time, so I'm not even going to attempt it. We're just going to go back and try and not fall down anywhere. If I do, then I'm hoping Sisqui can save me, but um, I'll just mention that. If we go up, that leads to the mushroom house. You can see, again, lots of layering of the archways, uh, a few Orin windows, a hugel feature, and then, of course, the room tops. To indicate yes it is indeed a shroom house. Um, so inside you got various mushroom bits here and there. You've got mushrooms acting as little seats. You've got mushroom acting like a little shelf. Actually I think it's a little stepping thing. I can get over there. Ah I fell down. See I'm awful at this stuff. And I did it again. <laughs> I'm like, the worst. It's it's horrible. Okay, let me get a good aim. See if I can get up there. There we go. So 
So I'm, I'm going to leave it at that, but you can see there's other shroomies that you can jump to for little seating areas. And uh, I think this is the base of one of the tree roots or something being used as like a little cubby hole for snuggling. And then here is the bathroom. Got a nice little water features, the waterfall arrangement to get that tub thing going. It's basically a water trough. And then they've added the waterfall parts to make it look like a tub uh, coming down. Again, trimmy stuff. Get all this <clears throat> walls and such. Okay, moving on, <laughs> hopefully. Okay, so after the shroom house, where the heck? I think we still have the, um, the human district to go through, if I can figure out how to get there. Again, this is all kind of like intertwined, so there's more than one way to get to and from certain locations. If you know your way around, you can find it pretty easy, but I've been here a number of times and I still get lost, so I'm like the last person you want to ask for directions on any of this stuff. Um, I think this is a decorative feature. It's just a lot of um, obsidian stones, some um, Google ornamentation, and of course the waterfalls, just to kind of add a little extra dress up to this spot. Just come from there. Let me go back through here. That's the kitty place again. So I think we need to go this way, maybe. No. <laughs> Ugh. I know there's a human district around here somewhere. It's, I think this is it. Yeah, because up above is like the Mordesh part, and then down here is, um, whoops, this way, the human section. So you got um, the walls here, this little trim. I think that's um, Draken fencing, and then you've got a little bit of cover part pieces to act as the pathway. Here we have a, a weapon shop, pretty straightforward. Got a little house set up. This I think was supposed to be a family with kids. So you got like some bunk beds here. Um, you got a little game table here. I don't know what game it's supposed to represent exactly, but little figurines and stuff. Tires as the seats there. Kind of play into the garage themed thing they got going on here. Uh, parents room with a little baby crib. Added a uh, <laughs> photo star plushies. That's a cute touch. And then upstairs is like a living room space. You've got the couch. Again, it's um, staircase landings, two by fours. Uh, it looks like, um, whoops, camera keeps wonking out. Um, it looks like a bar, and then they've added the pillows in on top of it. 
Um, here's that full item, the crane thing that I was talking about. I think this was the turned upside down that was the tracks for that little uh, vehicle we saw earlier. And then there's the little crane part that we saw elsewhere. So this is like a little uh, carpet for the kitties to play with their toys. And of course, last but not least, is the little rocking horse. Gotta show it. It's, uh, I think, uh, mostly, um, like exile pieces, like domes, cylinders, that kind of thing. You guys behave. Um, some of the wheatgrass for the mane and the tail. Uh, pillars for the legs, I think. Possibly hover part pieces for the bottom parts. I'm not sure. It's kind of hard to tell. And then it looks like two of cup bottoms for the eyes. I've seen several versions of those. I think I made one myself uh, a long while back. Use these similar items, but not exactly. Again, it's one of those things you can make. You can ask people to say, build me a motorcycle or a hover bike or whatever, and people might use the same items, but they always configure them differently, and that's part of the fun. So here's like a little, I don't know, hangout kind of thing. Okay, I think that leads to the Okay, so I think that's it for the living spots here. But now I'm not sure where to go. <laughs> to the brewery, the right. Okay. I see your character, so I'm looking. Uh-huh. Okay, so this is going to lead us to the next one. Is this one that goes to the the lost um, focus? Is that where we're headed? Gosh. You'd think I'd know this stuff by now, but no. Oh, no, this is, um, I forget what you called this. Okay, this is the fireplace room. Oh, this is where um, there's a little bit of a library. Um, this time, instead of stone or the two by fours, they use the decking pieces to frame up the bookshelves. So again, it's the same bookshelf, but it looks different in each setting just because of how they framed it up, which again helps to, you know, change things up. Notice the waterfalls make it look like a little bit of a river kind of thing going through here. It ties it into the tunnel that we got went through to get to part of this. And of course we can't miss the this board. Again, it's one of those things if you zoomed out too far, you're going to miss it. Uh, but if you manage to zoom in, you'll see that they're using um, carrots, Ralph Stowers, robots, and Protostar for one side. And then Hoogles and a lot of the statues and such for the other side. I, I prefer the carrot side. I, I don't know why, but that's that's my preference. <laughs> okay, so where to next? Columns room. I'm missing the column drum. Did we show that or will that come later? I guess that's here, the cave. Oh, no, this leads to the rock thing. <laughs> Again, this is one of the fab kits. I don't know if there was anything added. I suspect the plushie was added. And, but most of it's pretty much left as is. So I guess that leads us up to this part, right? Is this where I go next? Up the um, Exonite 
where the column is. Well, I think the next place would be the, the lost focus. Is that is that right? I don't remember what order of these that we visited, so it's kind of confusing. I know you said this was one of the new areas, I think. Okay, so I guess we'll go through here. Again, I like how there's like little touches of the exonite showing through in places. Remember the chasm, do not fall. Ah. I'm so going to die in here. It's so dark. That's what bothers me because I can't really see what's going on. Okay, so this is the columns room. And in theory, you want to get across, but you can't actually like just jump across because I think they're too farly spaced or widely spaced. Um, so it looks like, you know, one of those problematic areas that you can't get to it. But there is a trick to it. If you kind of zoom out, you can kind of see the staircase here. And it's just mostly due to the lighting and how the coloring looks and everything. It really hides it pretty well. If you're just looking at it like this, you don't even hardly see it. You can see that there's some, you know, edging here, but it looks impassable. But it, it actually, there's a staircase that leads up to the ridge. So, um, technically, I think Siskui built in uh, an escape path from the columns room if you happen to fall down. Hopefully that will not happen. I'm going to try and not... Uh, slip off the edges here. No promises, because again, I am awful at this jumping stuff. Uh, it just makes me so nervous. I'm not really good with heights in real life, so this just kind of turns my stomach, so I'm not really probably getting a good shot of the space, but there you go. <laughs> yeah, it's probably my settings. Um, I tend to have my screens a little darker because the brightness hurts my eyes. <laughs> That's why this particular room coming up is like a a bane for me because it's so bright. But uh, there you go. <laughs> so this is the lost focus. Um, I forget whose plot this is. Let me see. I think it's Amethystra's um, plot. Um, this was an expensive uh, thing to build because the exonite uh, bits are on the pricey side. I forget how much, but it's not cheap. Um, and that includes the pillars and the walls. Um, we've seen an actual, I think it was a cathedral or something that was built purely of exonite, and that was like crazy. But this is also uh, pretty phenomenal in just the layout. Um, and this is pretty much the entire plot. Um, just keep that in mind. This whole thing is basically the whole plot built up. So you can see how a lot of the pillars were built up, several layers. to get that, you know, jig jaggedy part going. Um, along the sides, I believe all of the uh, Doorways are faux. Um, I forget the story. I'm, I'm bad to say, uh, but I think um, 
the lost focus, there was some kind of thing about how uh, in the game, I guess in the lore, we were still searching for one. And I believe this, we said this is the earth one and that technically or, or in theory, uh, the doors all lead to the others. And I guess the, um, the color or maybe the design of the, the banners represents each, I guess, element or whatever of those particular focuses, but uh, obviously they don't actually connect anywhere. They're all faux um, exits or whatever. I don't know exactly what items being used for that, but uh, again, I think the, the main focus is just the design of this particular room, how they've layered up the walls and the columns to make this crazy design. So I think we go down, 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 come to this weird little pool. And last time, this we just hopped in straight away and I was like having the door thing, it kept flickering off and on. I couldn't get it to zoom in, but uh, thankfully this, this one bit uh, popped this in right straight away. So here's, here's the interior. The lighting is much more um, subdued, I think, which helps. So it's not as bright as the outside, but the design of it is amazing. I, I love the look of this place. So again, it's a lot of the pillars. Um, I think this is a daily login reward. I don't remember what that's called. Um, these pillars here that are floaty uh, come from, I think it's the Alpha Sanctum instance. Uh, as long as you complete it once, you unlock all of them and you can purchase them all. Um, I don't remember about the stained glass windows. I think they come from a kit. And then it looks like they're using one of the uh, updated waterfalls or the little pool here. So that's how you get um, this. And wait, maybe these doors are the ones that lead to the other focus. I don't know. It's kind of hard to keep it from reminding. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I just jump. <laughs> I don't care about the, as long as I'm not too far. If I, if I think I'm going to croak from it, then yeah, I'm not going to jump. Um, I forget what these parts, yeah, I think those are some kind of Elden thing. Um, I think uh, Poi used them as um, a knife set once to make it look like there was knives sticking in the, the wood block. But I, I like this room. It's very, um, again, the colors are toned down enough where it, it doesn't bother me visually, and but it's, it's nice and it's... Um, uh, 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 like a pattern it's not like there's some kind of wonky bits it's very mirrored I guess I, I like that uh, I don't know what you call it uh, there's a word for it and it's escaping me so just forget what I'm talking about but anyway so yeah something to do with the focus earth focus that's here and so in theory they found it and uh there you go. <laughs> so I believe that's the entire plot here. And let me just pop out of there. So you can see like from down here, just what that looks like. The entire room being exonite. Yeah, the lost focus beneath the algorithm as Eldens build the basic facility, implemented the focus blueprint, never finished it before the Genesis Prime, so it got lost. And yes, that is right, Ara. One of the um, uh, stained glass windows is crafted, and the others you buy from the shop. See, now I'm having to use the stairs. I can't fly up, unfortunately, which would be cool if I could, but I can't. So I have to bounce my way around.
Okay, and if I remember correctly, red is the exit, so I'm looking for the red flag, which is obviously on the opposite side of where I'm at. So if you're visiting this community, basically the focus area is more or less a dead end. You'll have to go backtrack um, through the columns pit. So again, I'm going to try and be careful. Oh, does it? It looks red. Let me go back. <laughs> It looks more red than the others, let's just say that. The blue one stands out the most to me. The blue stands out in comparison to the others, but eh, red. Got some red. Okay, so we're backtracking. Taking my damage. Again, try not to fall down. A little easier to see from this angle, but still iffy. I'm glad I'm not doing this for real because, again, I'm really klutzy in real life too, so it's not a good thing. All right, we'll try and, and survive without you. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Okay, so let me see if I can remember how to get to the next location. I think the next one we have to go back to the garage. If I can find the garage. And my stomach is growling like crazy. I didn't eat a really solid breakfast. I was feeling a little sickly this morning. So I just had a few crackers. And let me tell you, that doesn't sustain you. <laughs> okay, so let me see where the heck we are. Um, I don't think that's the route. Oops. Uh... Maybe I'm supposed to go back there. Let me let me just backtrack a little bit because oh, these roots kill me. Suck. Maybe back this way. Yeah, I'll back to the garage. Okay, I'm here. I'm here. I'm good. Is it this route? So I think we're looking for the herbivore stables, which maybe that's this. Yes, I'm in the right area. <laughs> Amaze balls. Okay, so here's the herbivore area. Again, it's another kind of like a mount stable kind of thing, um, but obviously they're not using the the wired fencing that they had in the carnivore section because um, these are a little bit more tame. Uh, so you got a little water pool for them. What's up? Oh, she sounds so sad. Um, using a variety of the NPCs, you got the Kurg from the uh, Lop Decor Pack. And these, uh, what are they called? Ravenox, the little bird things. They're like oversized angry chickens. Notice this one is still a plushie. Not that we had Rostower mounts. I don't think we ever had that. I think they were just always pets. Okay, this should lead us to... Okay, no. I think I'm... Okay. okay, I need to go back to the garage and then go up the ice cavern, apparently. So I need to find an up 
Where's an up? Okay. See, now I'm just not seeing your comment in the chat. <laughs> See, my notes are kind of steering me in the right direction. It's just I went to the one place out of order and it kind of threw me off. So, yeah, we're back to, um, I think this is where the pit is, isn't it? Yep, there's the pit. And we came from this direction over here, and I think this is where we head into. Your little helpful tour on Saturday, very appreciated because I don't think I would have gotten as far as easily as if I just done it on my own. So again, you see the little um, stone guy. He's seeing down here is, is good stuff. This one, he's saying there's not so good stuff. He's got a little danger sign, got some icicles hanging off his hat. And is this the final one? No, this is second to the final. Okay, so we're on the fourth plot, or about to be, I guess. So there's a path here, but we're going to go to the right, I guess. Because again, there's the icicle guy. And that brings us to, um, let me see, do I have the name? Uh, Almondine Starborn's Place, the Crystal Clear Cave, I believe. As we meander our way through these lovely tunnels. Now, most of this, I think, is Arctera formations, if I remember rightly. Um, there's a lot of the... Um, Icicle overgrowth type of items. Um, this part threw me for a loop. Uh, it's pretty scary. I'm trying not to look because, uh, again, heights are a really bad thing for me. Um, but it looks like another like bottomless pit almost. Uh, you can go around the edge to get to the other side, but um, Sisqui liked the view so much, um, they put uh, a layer of glass over it so that you can actually walk straight across. So that you get a good, a good view of it. I'm not looking. Anyway, <laughs> so let's go out into uh, the ice cave itself. Uh, let's go up this way, I guess. Again, a lot of this is our care formations just cleverly smushed together into these lovely uh, outcroppings of uh, stone and crystals. See a lot of the buoyant blue crystals and such spiked up there. And uh, you see that there is a little bit of uh, stuff going down on the bottom. We're going to spend a little bit of time up above uh, just showing the views from uh, different angles. Um, you can see there's a giant uh, skeleton. I presume it's like, I don't know, a dragon or something. Um, they called it the big blue baddie or daddy. I think it's baddie. <laughs> My spelling is so hard to read. Uh, big blue baddie, I guess. Um, but we're going to uh, take a over here on the side so you can get a better look at all of the formations. You can see the icicle or um, glacier spikes or whatever being used and then they're topped off with the uh, buoyant blue crystals. Yeah, that's what I thought. But at first, I thought that's what they were saying. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, big blue baddie. 
you can see how weirdly it changes color depending on what position you are. We're pretty close to the edge of no man's land on the map, so the lighting changes a little bit here and there. But you see what a difference that makes, the lighting um, changes. Again, you can see a good shot of the waterfall here. All that rock crystal. Another view. I'm in somewhere around over there. Put on some skis and just slide around on these things. If we can get another view from this side. Again, you know, when visiting these plots, a lot of times I would go out of my way to try and get up as high or get a nice broad view for screenshots and stuff. Um, you know, maybe I didn't post them anywhere, but I liked, you know, taking screenshots, especially of things that I thought was interesting or, or like um, back in the day when I wanted to try and, you know, get better at landscaping and stuff. But um, yeah, it was always, uh, I'm probably going to take a lot of damage here. Butter sneaking around. Okay, so now we're going to go down, take a look at some of the features down below. Yeah, I think a lot of this is uh, the frozen uh, lakes or water, frozen water. Um, I don't know what's being used for this part here. It looks like Dominion Chair, according to the hovering thing, which I didn't think the Dominion chair had anything like that deep black, but there you go. And they've got some glass covering it so you can't go all the way out, but it's a nice effect. It looks like a, an actual cave with um, water coming through there. Again, I'm getting a little close to the edge of the plot there, so that's why the lighting changes. Um, the bones and stuff also come from Arcterra. We had a lot of the uh, funky claws and the rib cages and things like that. Um, it looks like they put some glaciers or crystal bits inside the eyes to make them look a little creepy. Over here, for anyone that's a fan of Ice Age, I'm sure you'll recognize what this is supposed to represent. It's um, Scrat uh, going after his acorn. Forever unattainable, I guess. And then over here, we have a little uh, lop camp kind of thing. All right. Didn't write down the whole story, but I think it's Taki or Taki, Taki the Lop. The lop. Um, and I guess they were friends or thought they were friends with the Big Blue. And once Big Blue died, they just stayed. But they built this to like protect them or something. I don't know. It was a little, there's a long very in-depth story that I wasn't able to follow completely, but um, everything's all kind of lopsized. All the utensils and the weaponry and everything, even this little lookout tower that's got like his little weapons there he's ready to protect. And of course all those blinkies come from uh, the uh, Buoyant blue crystal and the, the formations, they have that, that blinky effect, so that's where you're getting all of that. 
I think Aurora used it in like a mountain range and it looked pretty, pretty nifty too. And then the last thing is the interior here for this particular plot. Wait, no, there's something else, isn't there? Let me see. Oh, I think it's inside, yeah. Getting ahead of myself. So beneath his skeleton is access to the bunker here. You can see the crystals lined up. The hole itself is part of the frozen uh, water. <laughs> is that true? <laughs> Okay, let me see if I can get the the door thing to light up again. I don't wanna There we go. Yeah, the camera is a little tricky tricky for me, twicky. This is the interior um of this, I guess, underground ice crystal cavern thingy. There's lots of crystals, lots of uh, of those uh, cave shrooms, lots of sparklies. And uh, we find a dead body or the remains of a body. Just a mannequin with some of the skeleton hat thingy wearing on it, but it looks it looks believable that it's a creepy, creepy dead guy. Um, but we find his ghost back here. Um, uh, I think the story is he was a wanderer, decided to take refuge in this cave, and then the creepy crawlies came and got him. And that was the end of him. So he still haunts this little place. <coughs> Which is kind of depressing, but there you go. I'm sure it was something to do with their role-playing uh, adventures. And that story just kind of strung up from that. Okay, let me I'll get out of here. Waterfalls, nice effect for this entrance exit kind of thing. It's the way they've got it set up. It looks like you're looking up to where. You're looking down from here. Okay, so I think. I think that's it for this particular plot. So we're moving on to the final one. And meander my way back. Let's see. Make sure. Yeah, so the Lost Wanderer, Blink Boot, Daddy, Loftite. So next we're heading to Peridot, or Peridot's house plot. Um, it is called the Rock Solid Hold. I think we have to backtrack a little bit. This get out. backtracking just a touch. Again, uh, much like the Lost Focus plot, it's kind of a dead end when you come to this one. You have to actually backtrack a bit, get back to the, the connecting tunnels. So there's the, the frozen guy. Uh, now we need to go this way, I guess. And hopefully that will take us to the final plot. Fingers crossed. Yeah, again, they're warning that's frozen, it's bad space. Um, here's another kind of like a pit thing. 
Okay, I think I'm lost as to where I need to go from here. <laughs> Let me see. Is it this way? Again, I am so horrible at these things. Embarrassing. Here. That one is not right. Okay. <laughs> I think that's the entrance. Yeah. Uh, okay, so if I'm here, where, where do I go? Go back to the small cave. Small cave. This is like an entire cave. <laughs> Cross the small fella. What? Oh, okay. The the farmy one. I take a left here. I think we're on the right track now. Oof. So here is like a little uh, waterfall-y part. Lots of mossy bits, stones, the rope bridges. Pass through a tree tunnel. And that pops us out into the rock solid hold. Okay, so um, let me see if I can remember these. Uh, I think it's uh, the less is the oldest or the tallest. Uh, I don't remember who all these are, but this is supposed to be a family portrait of uh, all of the sisters. So we've got, um, yeah, I don't remember who's who here. <laughs> I think that's, maybe this is Celeste with the weapon here, the, the thingy. I don't remember, but it's a, it's a family portrait. If you want to know more, maybe um, this way we'll like post that in the, the comments section, give you a better idea. But I know it's supposed to be a, a family portrait of all of the, the sib siblings. Um, but this is a rock solid hole and it's kind of uh, based off of a, like a Viking theme. Um, from what I understand, uh, a Viking village of sorts. So you've got these like little, I don't know what these are called. I'm, I'm sure they have a name. I can't think of them though. But uh, you can see it's like, um, I'm not even sure what item is being used. It looks like uh, just uh, the uh, thorny logs, but I'm not sure. It would be a different item, and they're just using the, the, the leggings of it or something. So Celeste is the hammer. OK, I kind of guessed that. Correctly. Riot is the sword, which is here, I think. Obzi is the keg. Sissy is the pink hair. And Alma is the tire. So there you go. So it's uh, Riot, Sissy, Celeste, Alma, and Obzi is the smallest. Okay, there you go. Um, anyway, most of the uh, structures here are built with thorny logs and tiki roofs. Um, this is a stable for the critters, animals, or you have you. Um, this door here uh, is a picnic table, I think. And then the stones, I think, come from uh, either a gate or a fence post. There's That kind of stone is on both 
things. I actually think there's a, a lamp post as well, but we don't normally use the lamps in that way because again, it takes from the lighting uh, decor count. So usually we don't use it for that kind of deal, unless you really just have the space and haven't used a lot of lights. <clears throat> but I think that's where a lot of these darker stones come from is from the fence post. In fact, I think that's where most of these stones come from. Again, you have the uh, rope bridge, but they've braced it with the uh, obsidian stone here. So uh, the next one is the tanner. Now there, yes, there is a fab kit that has like the stretched um, uh, skins and stuff, but I thought this was very nice that they created their own version. Um, it's basically picnic tables used for the, the stretcher thing, and then they used a rug, bear rug, or not bear rug, I forget what the thing's called. Um, it looks like a bear. I'm going to call it a bear rug. <laughs> Uh, they have a little kind of like a patch of garden here. It's mostly like, looks like dry grass and weeds. Um, but it's uh, stones, swirly stones, and then the uh, draken pillar. Using one of the corpses, the Pumera corpses on top to make it look like they're getting ready to skin it. And then, of course, the building itself is not just the thorny logs, but also... Uh, picnic cables for the doors and the windows. Make it look like it's uh, got the shutters that are closed, kind of. Uh, next is the fisher spot. So you got like the nets, the little buckets with critters in it. Um, these are just the um, upside down frost spores and then the little critter is like looking at you um it's a pair of these ice blotches the one that people like to turn upside down and make it look like something's filled um, but they're letting you see the eyes in this case to make it look like there's a creepy looking at you again uh thorny logs your roof um decking pieces i think for the base Here's that ice blotch again, but being used in the way I mentioned as a spill of some sort. Um, you've got uh, fishing poles, which is basically just the uh, spades. And then um, the netting down below. Or maybe those aren't fishing poles, I don't know. I, I thought that's what they were, but it could be something else. There's like the nets down below for collecting the fish. Okay, I was right, fishy rug. <laughs> Again, just multiple rugs. Some of them color shifted to make it look like uh, other types of skins and stuff for the tan. Um, a lot of the pathways is boardwalk. And it's just been sunken down into the dirt or sand, so it looks like it's a little, you know, weathered and worn kind of stuff. Um, I think we went this way next. Yeah, uh, this is supposed to be a chicken coop. So again, thorny logs roof and then here they have um, a bench being used as a little plank here and then a picnic table uh, with a metal crate inset to make it look like that's where the chickens would come in and out a little hutch Oop. Um, over here we have the bakery where they're making some bread uh, it's a snow pile for the little wad of dough, and then they've got a, oh, what do you call it, rolling pin. I think it's um, four cylinders stuck together, and then on each end it's a blue file. The round part of the file is, of course, set in size, so all you see is the handle. It's look like a nice little rolling pin.
excuse me. <laughs> That's been a long time coming. I know this has been burning for like a while now. Okay. Um, and of course, the loaf of bread is actually multiple pieces of toast just blended together to make it look like a loaf that you've sliced off. Okay, the next is um, the fruit and wheat fields. So it's just a bunch of um, the trellises, the small trellises, and a bunch of the uh, wheatgrass and other kind of grass patches to kind of blend it in with their little scarecrow there. Over here we have the smokehouse or smoke hut, however you want to say it, where they smoke the meats like a I don't know a small campfire or something with the little dome on top and the different meat bits uh, moving on to the blacksmith. So we have all of our racks of weaponry. Um, it's basically, again, lots of picnic tables being used in different ways for uh, props and, and shelving. And then as tables. <laughs> Over here we have um, the, uh, what do they call it, the anvil. I think it's part of the um, uh, Osun gate or fencing or something. I don't know if it comes as this one piece or if it's two pieces smushed together or what. Um, and then the, what do you call it, the forge thingy is made out of um, brick piles. Lots and lots of brick piles not an easy item to work with because it's very um, you know misshapen it's not straight edged all the way around so you just kind of have to play with that a little bit but they got it going pretty good um, this here if it looks a little funny it's actually a, a small campfire it's just upside down um, we've seen this feature used on a spook house once and it was a really clever idea for it to be used on the front door and it made it look really creepy but that's what that is um, it could be one or two I don't no, and they may have added ed extra flames. Um, but yeah, there you go. And then I guess this is supposed to be where they cool it off once they shaped it how they want with some water. I think it's just framed glass or unframed glass um, layered in there. One piece, the anvil is the top of the Osun gateway. Uh, gateway. Great. Oh, okay. Is it the one that's kind of like arched and has the pillars, I think? Okay, next is the community festival area, which would be over here. Um, if you're wondering about these like weird little stick bits, I think those are the brambles, but upside down, so we don't see the granule, we just see the roots or the, the sticky parts, which I thought was an interesting way of using them, uh, just to make it look like it's, I don't know, cut off trees or something. Um, so here's a stack of barrels. This plot definitely promotes the beer drinking. <laughs> uh, a couple of kegs set up for with the spouts and everything, lots of mugs. Lots of picnic tables, and then they have this little food area. Um, <clears throat> so you got lots of like string stuff. It's not string lights necessarily because it's not lamps or anything. It's just looks like credit cards. Um, but this is one way of using those um, Winterfest extravaganza items in a different way. Um, let's go around the food tables here. We've got um, fruit, the wheat, 
Um, looks like um, using one of, I think it's a horn item and they're kind of like turned it into a cornucopia here, a couple of them. So then they've stuffed it with fruits and I think it's basically just a fruit bowl or two. It's been kind of sandwiched in there to make it look like that. Um, and of course the pumpkins. Over here, a little fruit wreath. Uh, shrooms, another fruit basket, these, another cheese wheel kind of thing going on. Uh, a little tray for the utensils um, made out of picnic tables, stack of bowls, more tables, or I don't know, trays or some sort. Over here's the grill plate, I guess, for all the meats and cheeses and making your sandwiches. I like how they're using the um, these little brassiers, I guess is what they're called, for the food. I don't know where this item comes from, though. So not seen that before. It's a clever use of it, though, to make it look like a, a multi-tiered grill kind of thing. Um, again, the ice blotch being used for, like, spilt blood from this corpse here that they're carving off the stakes from. Yeah, I am kind of hungry. All this food's making me my mouth water. Um, if you're wondering about this wood part here, that's one of the Oren landings, I think. And then they just topped it with a cylinder or dome. Finish it off. Drake and Brazier. Yep. Okay, the lights apparently are, or these little string things are apparently solid because I keep hitting them. And again, and they've added in grasses and stuff, so it looks a little swampy too, kind of. And then you got another little kind of like a meeting place, a storytelling place, a place for the elders to share their wisdom, um, maybe to have a little promotion or celebrate somebody's first kill, who knows what. Um, but again, thorny logs, uh, swirly stones, uh, looks like. Um, a falcon fire pit thing, and then they've just laid in a lot of uh, the thorny log piles there for the fire blade, or the fire pit, whatever you want to call it. And then last but not least is the mead hall, and that's this big structure here that you see. Now, the way I understand it, they would have put more um, detail in. Uh, but again, they left most of this uh, as it was when it was submitted to the competition. Um, so just picture it with, you know, food and beer. And, and uh, I guess these are like little um, booths maybe where they can get um, the food and beer. <laughs> I don't know. Um, this looks like a, maybe like a little uh, spot where maybe a soothsayer could come or, or uh, somebody could like get treated for a sickness or something maybe or get their fortune told who knows what but i like the idea of it for some like those viking themed um plots and stuff this would have been a really good uh way because i especially like this part here with uh, the like the open grill kind of thing Again, they're using the chains in a way that makes it look like it's a continual link, but it's really not as two pieces using the Draken, what I'm going to call pillows. Um, a couple of pillars turned off of each other to make it look like a column. And then uh, multiples of the graded shelf with those stuck piglies on there. I, I think this is just a fun, fun way. I could see that, you know, like a bar setting or um, like a restaurant kind of thing. It'll work really good. 
Um, and again, it's replicated down here for the, the actual fire pit itself. I assume it's more of the uh, uh, campfires, but it could be multiples of these because they too have the uh, embers popping off of there. Maybe not as strong, but again, there may be several layered up in there to just get it more sparkly. And then, of course, this is the leader's table with their big chair. Again, uh, mostly uh, thorny logs, logs, excuse me, um, he roofs, uh, a little extra support from like pillars and such. But overall, a really awesome design. I like how they've changed the flooring a little bit around the pit so that it, you know, doesn't turn into like a fire hazard. So it's like supposedly stone in this part. But yeah, an incredible build. Um, very much worth uh, a visit if you can make it. Um, Sadly, it didn't win a prize in the actual community competition, but I thought it was among one of the better ones myself. Uh, but who knows, you know, how they judge those things. So everybody's got their opinion kind of deal going on. Uh, I will say, uh, again, um, this is not our final housing stream. I do plan to have at least a few more. Uh, it really depends on um, the dates that they set out for this, what they call the sunset stage. Because um, it doesn't sound like they're just going to yoink the plug straight up without any warning. They're actually giving um, players time to visit um, the game, record any video they want, uh, make some screenshots if they want, uh, do any last minute um, uh, accomplishments that they want to achieve. You know, maybe their guild has been trying to down a certain boss and this is their final push to, to that end and, you know, can say, yes, we did that. Um, who knows what it is? Maybe it's just individual things that they want to do. Uh, things, you know, maybe they never reached level 50 and this is their final shot to do that. Or maybe they want to try out a different character that they had always intended to do and didn't get around to it, and now is the time to do it. Um, but for my part, I'm going to continue with the weekly streams. Um, again, you're welcome to suggest plots um, that you feel like really deserve that uh, shot at being immortalized in these videos. Um, but I can't promise. Um, it's just going to be kind of a, a gut feeling on my part as to which ones I want to visit and which ones I end up not. Um, obviously, I still had a long queue to go through, so uh, again, I'm kind of gutted that we're not going to get to visit every place that I really wanted to, um, but um, we're going to try and catch as many as we can between now and then. Uh, so I guess the, the, the only thing I say right now is just keep an eye on my Twitter feed um, for when we stream next, which in theory will be next Wednesday. Um, Keep an eye on the forums, because uh, Sunshine at least has been posting um, information that she's allowed to do. Uh, right now, it's just been kind of vague, uh, saying that we're going to hear from them more specifics in a few weeks or in the coming weeks. Um, but again, it's not very uplifting. Uh, it could be, you know, maybe in those few weeks they go, okay, tomorrow we're shutting it down, and and then you know you're to boot. So I think there's a lot of people that are hesitant to make plans, including myself. So it's kind of open-ended right now. Um, if we get a definitive date, then I'll be able to tell you, okay, this will be, you know, at this time, this is when we'll do our final stream, that kind of thing. But in the meantime, we're going to just run things as they have been and hopefully get a few more plots um, under our belt before it's over. 
Um, for those that uh, wonder what's next, again, um, for myself, personally, I have no idea. Uh, I don't know if I just want to end this um, streaming business period or if I'll switch into something else. I'm not sure. I'm re not really in the mindset to start up a new game or, you know, maybe not a new game, but like get into an existing game that's already out there. I don't know if I'm up for that. There are a few games I already play, um, like World of Warcraft and Diablo and stuff, but um, I'm not really inclined to stream those particular games. Um, but um, like if I got into another one that had a housing system, um, I don't know if I'm really up for that, uh, considering uh, this kind of gut-wrenching result that we have going on now. But because um, I, I feel like I wouldn't be able to give it my all um, as I have in the past with this one. So we'll see. Uh, I may not ever stream again. I may stream again, but it will obviously be something totally different or um, at least a different game. But I, I don't know my plans. Um, for the rest of you, I hope um, that you find uh, some comfort in knowing that if I was able to stream your house, it will be there for, you know, until YouTube decides to take it down. Um, all of my videos are uh, preserved on Twitch as well, but I know most uh, prefer the YouTube setup, so they are there. I forget how many videos we got in total, but there's a lot. There's a lot of footage, a lot of memories captured, and I hope that... Um, that brings some comfort to some. Uh, unfortunately, again, like I said, I won't be able to get to everybody's, but uh, that's just how it goes. And um, as for suggestions on what you should do with the time you have left, I would again recommend if you have the ability and the equipment, um, film it for yourself. Even if it's just a silent video and you're just taking images, that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, I know there's been talk about folks wanting to preserve uh, certain elements like um, using Katia's add-on to um, lock in all of their builds. Um, I don't know how that would work if they actually, you know, opened a private server or something because obviously you would probably start up from scratch there, I guess. I, I don't know how that's going to work. Um, a lot of, the, I think there's even a petition that's up. Um, I don't have a link to it off the top of my head if someone wants to link that for us, but um, I know there's a petition trying to ask them to at least like set up some kind of a, a I don't know, some way to carry it on so that there's still access and just leave it in maintenance mode kind of thing where they have to do minimal touch up to it and just leave it open for us to be able to access the places that we want. Um, there's another group that says that'll never happen just due to the history of NCSoft and how they've treated um, other games that they've closed up in the past. Um, I think City of Heroes is one um, that never uh, saw the light of day again. Uh, there's probably others. I think someone gave a long list of ones. So I wouldn't hold my breath on that. Um, I would just plan accordingly as if, you know, these are our final days or weeks and uh, get the most out of it. Um, reach out to friends that you haven't reached out to, um, and, you know, share your stories, um, tweet about it, uh, you know, make some uh, imger picture files. Um, I don't know what else you would use. Um, uh, write up a, you know, a little farewell letter if you want. Whatever will kind of uh, bring you closure. Uh, uh, in the meantime, you know, if you feel like a, you need a place to come and share a bit of your angst or whatever it is you might be feeling, uh, be welcome to join us on our live streams. And um, until uh, we can't do them anymore. But again, as soon as I know some definitive uh, dates and how we're going to end up, um, you know, if we've got like three weeks to go, um, then I'll let you know, okay, that third week, that'll be our last one. And uh, you can join us for that. Uh, but in the meantime, um, I don't know what to say. Just uh, try not to let it get to you too much. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right. Thanks for joining. Thanks for all your support. And we'll see you later. Bye-bye.